I just wanted to conclude with a couple of just just last statements. And, and, and you know, the main point that we want to get across is that we started with this video of um, you know a mouse running around collecting some data. And you know, hopefully, over the past you know two days, you've gotten a sense of every single step um, that it takes to go from you know designing an experiment, building the mini scopes, implanting a surgery doing the behavior and eventually analyzing the data. And you know, what we've tried to do is break this down into um, individual processes that I think are, are, are very doable. And so one of the things that we try to get across in these workshops is that this is a very, um, you know, it's, it's a long, there's a lot of steps, but each one of them is very, um, you know, very much achievable if you break them down. Um, and so through this workshop, we've gone through, you know, the imaging principles, you know, how to build a miniscope, what, what, where the light path goes. Um, we talked about how to implant a grin lens, um, how to do the aspiration or the tunneling, how to uh, implant a base plate on top of there to get the right field of view. Um, Daniel went through how to build and how to acquire the data. Um, Will and Joe and Zach went through the imaging and behavior, so how to, how to actually put a miniscope on a mouse's head, how to run an experiment. Um, today we heard some some great uses uh, of those miniscopes and some new developments, and and Phil took us through the data analysis from from the Minion pipeline, um, and, and finally Daniel went through the future directions, which is just so many great. I, I was you know uh, Tico's slide that that Daniel shared. I also uh, I posted it in our lab Slack. I thought it was a really cool uh, you know demonstration of how far the miniscope community has come from. Uh, you know, from the from the very first uh, versions to now having uh, you know more than a dozen different variations and and, and uh, groups working on this simultaneously and together, which I think is is really amazing. Um, one last thing, one last reminder that these lectures are going to be available on online. We're going to send out an email blast that will uh, uh, give you the uh, links to all of all of the videos and all of the resources that we talked about. Uh, during the workshop. Um, you know, hopefully we've convinced you that yes, you can do this. This is a, a certainly a, a, a viable technique to implement into your research program and you're ready to, to buy a mini scope. Um, you know, the next step is to look for, uh, look at the, the buyer's guide. Um, that will take you through all the steps you need to, to, uh, to purchase a mini scope um, and, and all of the, um, um, equipment and materials that you'll need to run uh, these kinds of uh, experiments. Our recommendation is to go through Open Ethis production site. Um, they have the fully assembled mini scopes uh, that have been tested, and we have validated that they are using you know, the latest versions of our um, designs, um, Daniel's designs, really, um, and that th that they work. Um, and so they really are our manufacturing partner here. Um, there are other options available. Um, so uh, LabMaker sells uh, assembled versions of V3 and V4 miniscopes. What they did was they took our designs from online. They then made their own and without any of our any input from us. And so they've replicated the designs and the, the boards and they should work well. Um, we haven't always tested everything that that lab maker puts out because uh, we just haven't had that partner relationship with them um, like we do with Open Ethis production site, um, but they should work and you can certainly source uh, parts from them. Um, if you're interested in individualized machining parts, um, Shiloh uh, is someone that we've worked with uh, for a long time. He was our original uh, machinist that helped design the, the parts. And so you can order directly from him a lot of the housings and the base plates if you want to build them yourselves. Um, and that's from miniscoparts.com. Um, one thing I do want to note is that we don't necessarily recommend mixing and matching parts because sometimes there's a bit of variability and particularly in the base plates in the size of them. And so you don't necessarily want to mix and match all of them. Um, so you just want to make sure that they are compatible with each other. So just to add a couple things from, sorry, Tristan, that you oh, mentioned in the buyer guide, we try to keep it updated, but anyone has through the open source license, anyone can build and sell mini scopes. And so we try to know who's selling them and try to you know make sure that they are up to uh, a decent quality. But in the buyer guide, we will outline what things we've tested. Some, you know, everything from OpenEath is we always heavily test and they're very much involved. 
lab maker, we, we try to, and I think they're getting better at, at sending us things to test. Um, but really the biography sky is where to go for looking at recommendations and see really what we've fully validated or not. Uh, and OpenEAP is, like I said, also sells assembly kits, which uh, I strongly recommend using instead of the fully assembled it's just to force you to, to, to build it once and then, then you'll be really empowered. Uh, and then the last thing is, Tristan said, Shiloh, who runs Miscope, uh, parts.com, he's really been there from the start as a machinist, really supporting the project. And he currently pretty much machines all the parts in the world for miniature microscopes. And so if you need any individual parts or additional base plates or caps, uh, he, it's a really good site to go to to get supplied by those. Um, and then Finally, he also helps oftentimes if you have a, a custom need, he has a lot of experience building custom components around the mini scope. So you can always reach out to him uh, and, and, you know, and he even sells some custom parts that other labs have uh, you know, asked him to build and they end up being really useful and they get put up on, on the, part, uh, the website as well. So miniscoparts.org.com is a great place to get individual components. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, and so uh, we've shown this slide before, but um, you know, we've thrown a ton of information at you. We've talked about you know things that have taken us you know five years to accumulate the knowledge to to go through this, um, and so it's not something that you're going to remember everything on the first try. So you know, luckily we have resources available for this. We have a V3 wiki, a V4 wiki, a Google group that is. If you have any questions, you can throw the throw it on the Google group. Um, and hopefully someone from the community will answer. If no one else answers, Daniel will usually answer uh, within a few days. Um, and then, you know, all the, the, the repositories are on GitHub. All of everything is there for, for people to, to look at um, and really just have, um, you know, there are tons of resources, um, use them and, and, you know, be a part of this community. I think that's, that's what we're hoping uh, you all will do. Uh, and the last thing, you know, we want to say welcome to the Miniscope family. Like, you know, this is um, a community that we are very proud of. Uh, we are really excited to have, um, you know, the number of people that signed up for this workshop um, was really exceptional. Um, you know, we had over 500 people register, and I'm sure a lot of people will use this as a resource going forward. Um, so we're really excited to have um, everyone here uh, be a part of this community, and um, we're, we're willing to help um, however we can. Uh, to, to make sure that you're successful in these experiments. And so uh, welcome to the family. Um, reach out to us if you uh, need help, use the resources that we've made available, and hopefully you all, you all will help each other um, solve some of these problems as well. Um, with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to, to Stephen Larson again. Uh, is he here? Yes, he is. Um, Stephen, do you want to say some some last words um, before we break? Okay, so Stephen says he can't. Do you want me to? Oh, there we go. Okay, <laughs> great, great, great. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to, I don't want to add a lot here. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you, uh, from my perspective to Tristan and Tristan's lab, Denise and Denise's lab, Daniel and Daniel's lab, uh, all the speakers today, uh, my team, Alexandra, Paolo B, Paolo L and Zoran, uh, for helping us, uh, put all this together. Um, it's great to be part of such a thriving community. I dropped a couple of links in the chat for folks who are interested to find out more about cloud workspaces. Again, we, um, uh, we're very passionate about helping scientists uh, do their work and in the open source, we find that sometimes a little bit of extra help and guidance uh, to speed things along uh, can make things easier. So we're experimenting uh, with cloud workspaces. And uh, we've also, I mentioned at the top of the discussion that there's um, uh, uh, yesterday that uh, we've created a uh, data analysis focused uh, Slack workspace uh, because as this community grows, the burden of uh, sort of questions that get answered specifically about uh, the code sides of this and the Minion pipeline has, has expanded. And um, we're trying to create a space uh, for that part of the conversation to happen there. So general questions, Miniscope, there's the Google group. That's great. Keep going there. Um, if you guys want to 
uh, get some uh, real time uh, help uh, and ask questions about the data analysis, um, check out the Slack and we'll see where it goes. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody again. And um, so then just uh, one note on housekeeping. Um, uh, so uh, if you're uh, part of the hands on analysis tutorial that will begin here in the same link uh, in 15 minutes. Um, again, if you uh, weren't admitted to that, sorry, um, we uh, really do want to keep a high quality um, TA to participant ratio for that. So um, however, some of these other resources may be helpful to you uh, that we've that we've been talking about and posting. Um, but um, yeah, so if you aren't participating in the hands on tutorial, we'll say thank you uh, now and, and we'll stop this recording here and again as uh, as Tristan said the recordings uh, for this and for the hands on tutorial that'll happen will be made available uh, in the next coming days so thank you all and until next time.